do that for you.
This trick again? I know what you are. It won't work. I will stay strong. The boy is exhausted. And this cage, uh, I've never seen anything like it. Rest easy. Help is here. Uh, enough visions. If anything in you is human, uh, kill me now and stop this game. He's delirious. He's been tortured and has probably been denied food and water. I can tell. Here, I have a skin of... Don't touch me. Stay away. Filthy blood mages getting in my head. Ah, uh, I will not break. I'd rather die. What others? What are you talking about? Irving and the other mages who fought Aldred. Where are they? They are in the harrowing chamber. The sounds coming up from there. Oh, Maker. We must hurry. They are in grave danger, I am sure of it. You can't save them! You don't know what they've become. They've been surrounded by, by blood mages whose Wicked fingers snake into your mind and corrupt your thoughts. His hatred of mages is so intense. The memory of his friend's deaths is still fresh in his mind. You have to end it now, before it's too late. Are you really saving anyone by taking this risk? To ensure this horror is ended. To guarantee that no abominations or blood mages live. You must kill everyone up there! Thank you. I knew you would make a rational decision. Rational? How is this rational? Do you understand the danger? I know full well of the dangers of magic, but killing innocents because they might be Maleficarum is not justice. I know you are angry. You know nothing! I am thinking about the future of the Circle, of Ferelden! I am just willing to see the painful truth, which you are content to ignore. Ah, but what can I do? As you can see, I am in no position to directly influence your actions, though I would love to deal with the mages myself. My cage is Aldred's doing, or one of his mages. Once they're dead, I will be free. No one ever listens. Not until it's far too late. Make her turn his gaze on you. I hope your compassion hasn't doomed us all. What we have here, an intruder, I bid you welcome. Care to join in our revels? Fight if you must. It will just make my victory all the sweeter. Don't forget the litany. It will thwart Aldred's attempts to control the mages and win this fight for us. 
Irving, are you all right? I've been better, but I am thankful to be alive. I suppose that is your doing, isn't it, Wynne? I wasn't alone. I had help. The Circle owes both of you a debt we will never be able to repay. Come, the Templars await. We shall let them know that the tower is once again ours. All right, but please hurry. Gregor should be informed of what happened here as soon as possible. Are you ready to leave yet? We should tell the Templars about what went on here. I'll need you to guide me down the stairs. Ugh, curse whoever insisted the Circle be housed in a tower. Make us breath. I did not expect to see you alive. It is over, Gregor. Aldred is dead. Aldred tortured these mages, hoping to break their wills and turn them into abominations. We don't know how many of them have turned. What? Don't be ridiculous. Of course he'll say that. He might be a blood mage. Don't you know what they did? I won't let this happen again. I am the Knight Commander here, not you. We have won back the tower. I will accept Irving's assurance that all is well. But they may have demons within them, lying dormant, lying in wait. Enough. I have already made my decision. Thank you. You have proven yourself a friend of both the Circle and the Templars. I promised you aid. But with the Circle restored, my duty is to watch the mages. They are free to help you, however. Speak to them. Yes, Irving. For now, I will have to oversee a sweep of the tower. There may be some survivors, and we should do our best to tend to them. Please excuse me. And Irving, it is good to have you back. Ah. I'm sure we'll be at each other's throats again in no time. Here we are, the tower in disarray, the circle nearly annihilated. Though it could have been much, much worse. I am glad you arrived when you did. It's almost as though the Maker himself sent you. The 
least we can do is help you against the Darkspawn. I would hate to survive this, only to be overcome by the Blight. You have my word. As first enchanter, the Circle will join the Grey Wardens in the fight. Irving, I have a request. I seek leave to follow the Grey Warden. Wynne, we need you here. The Circle needs you. I appreciate the sentiment, Irving. But the Circle will do fine without me. The Circle has you. This man is brave and good, and capable of great things. If he will accept my help, I will help him accomplish his goals. You were never one to stay in the tower when there was adventure to be had elsewhere. Why stay when I can be of service elsewhere? Then I give you leave to follow the Grey Warden, but know that you always have a place here. There is much to be done here, and I must go. You must forgive me for not being a proper host. When the time comes, we will stand beside you. I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know but they will act against you. I have arranged for a, a solution with your leave. The Antivan Crows send their regards. An assassin? Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best. <laughs> <laughs> and the most expensive. Just get it done. Fellow traveler of the Fair Lands, are you a seeker, perchance? My packs are light, but I have a tome of strange origin. The Deus V. Eternus, rumored to be the last message to a sinful world from the Maker himself. I have uh, no idea what you're talking about, and uh, neither do these large men carrying swords. Get them! 
Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. Well, uh, let's see. How do I tell you this? We're almost at Redcliffe. Did I say how I know Arl Eamon exactly? No, no, I'm not his son. I'm a bastard. My mother was a serving girl at Redcliffe Castle, and she died when I was born. Our Lehman took me in and raised me before I was sent to the Chantry. The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marek, which made Kaelin my half-brother, I suppose. Ha! Yes, I guess it does at that. I should use that line more often. I, I would have told you, but... It never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got special treatment for it, anyhow. Al Eamon eventually married a young woman from Orlais, despite all the problems it caused with the king so soon after the war. He loved her a great deal. Anyway, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as the Arl's bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care. But she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. She may have, but I think it's more likely that she feared the rumors might be true. I can't blame her for that. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall. And it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. Let's hope not. I'm the son of a commoner and a Grey Warden to boot. It was made very clear to me early on that there was no room for me raising any rebellions or such nonsense. And that's fine by me. No, if there's an heir to be found, it's Arl Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Kaelin's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. Though, if he's really as sick as we've heard... Oh, no, I, I, I don't want to think about that. I really don't. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. Oh, lovely. I'm going to regret this. Somehow I just know it. I 
thought I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? The Arl? Then you, you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I, I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother, he's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. It's Thomas, yes? And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainersphere, brother to the Arl. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news! Still alive, yes. Though I'm just as surprised about that as you are, believe me. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. That Loghain pulled out his own men in order to save them. That Caelan risked the entire nation's safety in the name of glory. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the King. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So, you are a Grey Warden as well? Is it possible we've met? You seem very familiar. Ah, yes, that's it, exactly. A pleasure to meet you indeed, though I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses, returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. These are terrible times. Just terrible. I'm so scared, Father. What Sorry. are you going to do? Am I bothering you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. Those... Those things dragged my mother away. 
I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her screaming all the time, everywhere. How terrible, you poor thing. I wish there was something we could do to help. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. You will. Thank you so much. Please find him. Let us pray. Blessed art thou who exists in the Maker's sight. Blessed art thou who I... I guess so. Good day. We must pray and hope for the Maker's compassion. No sign of them coming back from the castle. So you're the Grey Warden, are you? I heard they all died with the king. So you say, a damn Kunari could walk up and say he was a Grey Warden. I wouldn't know the difference. We aren't gonna turn aside anyone who wants to help, though. Don't take me for being an ingrate or nothing. Well, we do want to help however we can. You can trust us. Name's Murdoch. Mayor of what's left of the village, providing we aren't all killed and hauled off to the castle tonight. I... I hope you're right. I've been trying to hold us together, but it isn't easy. Anyhow, you're here, and they tell me you're in charge. We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids, so he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. Not by nightfall, and not well enough that I'd be happy to test it in combat. If there were others, don't you think I'd ask them? I'd appreciate it. If he doesn't help, he'll die like the rest of us. What good will that do anyone then? Tell them to maintain watch. I don't want a surprise attack before the sun goes down. Go away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Huh? Who is that? What do you want? I've been to enough. Hmm? All right, all right. Let me undo the locks. All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. Make his breath. What is that smell? It's like someone set a brewery on fire. Somebody's been drinking. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? The Grey Warden, is it? <laughs> it takes all kinds. Anyhow, my name's Owen. Though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? My girl, Valena. is one of the Alessa's maids and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me or the village or anyone. Why not? It's not like we're going to live past the night anyhow. Or are you going to save us? 
Is that so? Mm. Maybe it's the drink talking, but you almost sound like you believe that. It'd do me the world of good to think maybe someone like you could go in and find her. Provided any of us live through the night. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damned thing, and I didn't believe him either. I want to promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. We will do our best. Please believe us, friend. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. And I suppose there's no point in me sitting around, is there? Time to relight the forge and get the smithy going, eh? Murdoch will be pleased. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. I must admit, it feels good to be up and doing something finally. There's no way I'm sobering up before morning, however. I've you to thank for that, stranger. Just do what you've promised, and it will have been worthwhile. Right. I haven't got much, obviously, but I'll do whatever I can for you. What do you need? Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll inform Bantig and the militia is ready to fight. We'll give those bastards a welcome they won't soon forget. I hope you're right. We may just be village folk. But we're going to fight like there's no tomorrow. You'll find him and his men at the mill by the bridge, to the north. I have a good feeling about tonight.
What are you doing? All right, I'll come out. Please, don't hurt me. I'll go back to the Chantry if you want. I didn't mean any harm. I just didn't want to be at the Chantry anymore. Everyone's scared, and I want to be brave. I wasn't always in here. I hid when I heard you coming. I was... Well, I shouldn't tell you. It's a secret. You could. All right, I guess. I just... Father said I could have his sword when I grew up. It was Grandfather's. And Grandfather was a great dragon slayer. I thought... If I was brave like Grandfather, I could use his sword and... Kill the bad people who took Mother. In the chest. In Mother's room. Father gave me a key. But I'm not supposed to give it to anyone. I... I guess you're right. I should help defend the village, shouldn't I? Father would have if he were here. Oh. All right. Here's the key. I hope you use it to kill a lot of those bad people. I should go back to the Chantry. Good luck. Alistair, what's this? It's a sock. It's a filthy sock. How did it find its way to my bedroll? Maybe it likes you. Socks are sneaky like that. Anyway, it's not mine. It has your name stitched on it. Oh, <laughs> uh, part of Templar training back at the Chantry. The men were uh, always getting their socks mixed up. Uh, anyway, um, sorry about that. I'll take it from you right now. One of my socks is feeling a little damp anyway. A change would be nice. You're going to put it on? It's filthy. 
and dry. We're not exactly traveling in the lap of luxury here. What hideous habits you've picked up. Yes? Well, here I am. Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Greetings, Grey Warden. I am as relieved as Ban Tegan is to see you here. I must admit that I do not quite know how to address you. Is my Lord sufficient? Grey Warden it is, then, and thank you kindly. I am Sir Perth, until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now, my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle, or perhaps I would be dead. Ah, well, with the Grey Warden aiding our defense, perhaps all is not lost. We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. That gladdens my heart to hear it. No, nothing comes to mind. If you have not spoken to the mayor, Murdoch, you should. His militia is far more in need of aid than we are. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. You are a stranger amongst us, yet you still agree to defend our village in its darkest hour. We are most grateful to you. I will be grateful of your attempt, even if it fails. We can ask no more. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. Surely this cannot be the entire village. These few are all who are left. All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. 
What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. I can pray with them and give them my blessing. But Sir Perth wants me to call upon the Maker to shield them from evil. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you know. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. I suppose their belief in the Maker's power could inspire them, but it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them, and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. Bevan said you were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. Bevan told me about Grandfather's sword. So you have it then? I suppose it won't go to waste, at least. I have no idea what it's worth, to be honest. And you found Bevan? I couldn't ask you for money. Incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much. How can I ever repay you? The Maker sent you. I just know it. Thank you again. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Must we do this? The faith that will protect these men must come from their heart, surely. If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. Of course I do. These are Maker's symbols. What better protection could we ask for? I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense at last. No, nothing comes to mind. If you have not spoken to the Mayor, Mert, ask me whatever you wish. As you wish, Grey Wolf. Mother Hannah's amulets have greatly bolstered my men's confidence. You couldn't have armed us with any better than our faith in the Maker. There is still time before the sun goes down. If you have not yet spoken to Murdoch, or if there is anything you have planned... Good luck to you then, and may the Maker watch over us all.
It's time, men. Know that we fight for the Maker with our arms.
Dawn arrives, my friends, and all of us remain. We are victorious. And it is these good folk you see beside me that we have to thank for our lives today. Without their heroism, surely we would all have perished. I bow to you, sir. The Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. Allow me to offer you this, the helm of Sir Ferris the Red, my great uncle and hero of Ferelden. He would approve passing it to one so worthy. Take it then, and use it in good health. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Now they walk with he who is their maker. Long may they know the peace of his love. With the Maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now, with no time to waste, meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. <laughs>